Okay, in this presentation, we're going to look at RC circuits. Now, an RC circuit is simply a circuit that consists of a battery, a resistor for the R, and a capacitor for the C. And so the battery is going to have some potential difference, which is usually called V or E, V for voltage, E for EMF. And we can see that all of these things are in a line, and therefore we have all these connected in series together. And so this is an RC series circuit, or more commonly just an RC circuit. Now the question that we want to ask is, how long does it take for the capacitor to become fully charged? And let's just remind ourselves what that means for the capacitor to become fully charged. So here I have that same circuit, but I've added in a switch here. And so be, when the switch is open, nothing's going to happen. But when I close the switch and complete the circuit, there's going to be a potential difference between the battery and the capacitor. And that will create an electric field, which will push charges onto the capacitor. Now those charges are going to go uh, through the resistor, uh, but eventually they're going to end up stored on the capacitor. And as charge builds up on the capacitor, it creates a potential difference across those plates. So if I were to, say, put a voltmeter across the plates of the capacitor, I could measure that voltage across those plates. Now, as more and more charge builds up on the plates, the potential difference of the plates gets bigger and bigger until ultimately the voltage across the plates of the capacitor equals the voltage across the, the battery terminals. And we know that once the potential difference of the capacitor is the same as the potential difference of the battery, the current's going to stop because it's the potential difference that creates the electric fields that drives the currents. And so if there's no potential difference anymore, then there'll be no more current. So what are the factors that determine how long it takes for that process to occur? And it turns out it's, it's dependent on two things. One, it's dependent on the capacitance of the capacitor. Remember what that means. When we say a capacitor has a particular capacitance, that's telling you how much charge that capacitor can hold for a given battery. So if I have a bigger C value, that means I have the ability to hold more charge, and that means it will take longer for the battery to fill it up with charge. And so a bigger capacitor means it's going to take a longer time. Now the other factor is the resistance of the resistor. Now we know that the resistor is going to act to impede the flow of current. And so in essence what happens is that the resistor is slowing down the flow of the current. So it takes longer for the capacitor to charge if the resistor is bigger as well. So if we're considering the voltage, we know that it's going to be zero when the switch is open. I flip the switch, there hasn't been any time for charges to flow on the plate. So right at the beginning, the voltage is going to be zero and the charge is going to be zero. But as the charge flows onto the plates, the charge is going to fill up and the voltage is going to increase until it equals the voltage of the battery. Now, how much charge will it have when it's full? We know that the charge is equal to C times V, but the V is going to be the voltage of the battery, which in this case is E. So we could say that Q is equal to C times E. That's going to be the total amount of charge when the capacitor is fully charged. We know the voltage is going to be equal to E when it is fully charged. So these are both what we would expect when the capacitor is fully charged. And of course, when we first start, we know that both Q and V are zero. Now, what about the current? Well, when I flip the switch, there are no charges over here repelling anything. And so you would expect the current to be maximum, at its maximum value. But as current flows and charge builds up on these plates, the charges here or repelling the charges over there, so it gets harder and harder for the battery to put new charges onto the capacitor, and so we expect that the current decreases as the capacitor gets charged, and we know, in fact, that once the voltage equals 
the voltage of the battery, once the voltage of the capacitor equals the voltage of the battery, the current's going to stop or simply be zero. And so we would expect at the beginning the current to be maximum and at the end the current to be zero. Now if we do a little bit of calculus we can actually come up with an expression for what those values are, specifically the charge, the voltage, and the current, for any time t. So if I have a value t, I want to know what's the voltage of this system at three seconds, I can plug in three seconds there and calculate it uh, and get that value. Now one thing that's weird in these formulas is they involve the exponential function. And you have probably seen that before. Uh, it's very often written as e to the x, or in this case, this term would be e to the minus t divided by rc. And so if you've seen it that way and you're more familiar with it that way, you can write it that way. But uh, it's also written just as exp and then the argument in the parentheses. Now, if we're looking at these, these first two expressions, the one for q and the one for v, they actually look pretty darn complicated, so let's tackle them in a minute. This third expression, the expression for current, is a little bit simpler. And we could, for example, rewrite that simply as I equals to I naught E to the minus T over RC. And if we write it that way, that might be more familiar, but that just represents an exponential decay. And we could actually plot that, and you may have seen these kinds of exponential decay plots before. If we wanted to plot, for example, the current versus the time, it would look something like that. And we're at cross the axis there, that would be the initial current, I naught, and it eventually would fall down to asymptotically approach zero. And so again, I could come out to any time t, I could go up and then I could read off what the current was at that time t. Or I could simply plug in that t value into my calculator and calculate what the value of the current was at any time t. Now if we look at these other two expressions, the one for q and the ones for v, they're a little bit more complicated. First of all, let's look at the expression out front. Here we have an E, which again is just the voltage of the battery. We know that eventually the voltage across the plates of the capacitor is going to be equal to the voltage of the battery, and so we can see that here. Up above, if we're looking at the charge on the capacitor, we know that eventually it's going to be equal to C times E. That's the capacitance times the voltage, and Q equals CV is sort of our fundamental equation for capacitors, and we can see that there. This business in the middle is showing you the behavior in between the starting point and the ending point. So let's look at what that function looks like. And so here I've plotted the voltage uh, across the capacitor as a function of time. We know that the charge function is going to look remarkably similar to this, but what we see here is uh, an example of an exponential kind of growth, but one that tapers off and asymptotically approaches this value of E. And if we look at this formula here, we see 1 minus E to the minus T over RC. What is this term here, this E to the minus T over RC? That term is basically the same as 1 over E to the RC. And so that minus sign here that tells you when you have something raised to a negative power, that just means you can put it in the denominator of the reciprocal here. And so this gives me e to the rc, 1 divided by e to the rc, that's what that term is here, right there. And so I have 1 minus that. So what is this when t is equal to 0? When I plug in t is equal to 0 here, e to 0 power Anything to the zero power is 1, and I would get 1 minus 1 is equal to 0, and so at t equals to 0, we would expect the voltage to be 
zero, which it is on the graph and in the function. Now, if I let t get very, very long, say t goes to infinity, I'm dividing by a bigger and bigger number, so this whole term goes to zero, and I get v is equal to e times one minus zero, or e times one, and so as t goes to infinity, the voltage just approaches this value e. And again, that's what we expect. If I want to know what the voltage is in the middle here somewhere, I simply need to plug that t value in right there. Now, it's worth noting that in the argument of this exponential function, we have minus t divided by the resistance times the capacitance, rc. And that value, r times c, is known as the time constant of the circuit. rc is the time constant. And it has units in seconds. If you actually map out the units, you can see that the units will all cancel and you'll be left with seconds. Now, a time equal to RC is a special time because that represents uh, the how quickly the circuit is changing. And note that it does not matter uh, what the voltage is. It's going to take the same amount of time to proportionally reach that value. In other words, it doesn't matter if this voltage is 1 volt, if it's 10 volts, if it's 1,000 volts, whatever the voltage of the battery is, one time constant of that circuit will see the voltage across the capacitor raise 0.63, the maximum value, or 63%. The second time constant will see it even higher, and about the time you get to the third time constant or the fourth time constant worth of time gone by, the battery has fully charged the capacitor. And that doesn't matter how big the voltage is or whatever, it's going to be the same for any combination of RC. Once you know what the RC value is of your circuit, that's going to give you an indication of how long it's going to take that capacitor to be fully charged. So let's look at an example here. Here we have an example with a 3-volt battery connected to a 2500-ohm resistor in series with a 500-microfarad capacitor. And the question is, how long will it take to reach 75% of a full charge on the capacitor? So if I draw that circuit here, I've got a 3-volt battery connected in series with a 2500-ohm resistor and a 500-microfarad capacitor. And the question is, how long will it take to reach 75% of a full charge? So what we want to do is we want to look at our formula list that we have on the previous slide and find the one that goes with charging of a capacitor. And we find the expression that is for Q, the charge. And so we see that Q is equal to Q0, 1 minus E to the minus T over RC. Now, this Q0 here... Remember, that's going to be the value of the charge on the capacitor when it's fully charged. So that's the maximum amount of charge there. And so when the capacitor is 75% charged, it's going to have a Q equal to 0.75 Q0. And so I can simply plug in 0.75 Q0 equal to Q0 times the stuff in the brackets. And if I do that, I can actually see that I've got a Q0 on each side and I can cancel it out. After that, it's just a little bit of algebra because I've got 1 minus e to the minus t divided by rc, and that is equal to 0 0.75. If I bring this over there and that over there, I can solve for the e to the minus t over rc. And when I do that, I get this expression. e to the minus t over rc is equal to 1 minus 0.75, and that's equal to 0.25. Now, I want to solve for t, and I've got this weird thing, exponential function to the minus t over rc. How do I get t by itself? Well, 
you guys have seen inverse functions before with the trig functions. You know, for example, that if you have the sign of something and you want to know what the something is, you take the arc sign. The arc sign is the inverse function of the sign, and it undoes it. Well, the inverse function of the exponential function is the natural logarithm. And on your calculator, there's a button that says LN, and that stands for natural log. And so to undo the exponential function, you take the natural log of it. That basically gets makes it go away. But if you take the natural log of one side of an equation, you have to take the natural log of the other side of the equation. So if I take the natural log of the left-hand side, I'm left with minus t over rc, the stuff inside the argument, and I take the natural log of the point 25, I can just plug that into my calculator, and I get minus 1.386. Now, again, I can see both sides of this have a minus sign, so I can cancel that minus and that minus, and I can plug in the values for R and C, which we know R is 2,500 ohms, and C is 500 times 10 to the minus 6 farads. Plug those in, and I end up with a result that the time it takes for the capacitor to reach a 75% charge is 1.3, I'm sorry, 1.73 seconds. Next, we can look at the case for a discharging circuit, where the capacitor is fully charged and then the battery is removed, and the charges of the capacitor are then allowed to flow off the capacitor through the circuit. In this diagram, we have a capacitor right here, which is drawn almost like a battery, because in a certain sense, that's how it's behaving. The capacitor has been fully charged, the battery is then disconnected, and the capacitor is allowed to discharge, and so charge is going to flow off the capacitor. So if you imagine a bunch of positive charges on this plate and a bunch of negative charges on that plate, there's no longer a battery to maintain that potential difference. So all these positive charges are going to repel each other, and they'll flow off. All these negative charges are going to repel each other, they'll flow off. And so current will flow through the circuit, and the capacitor will discharge. Now if we look at the formulas for the charge the voltage, and those are both, that would be the charge on the capacitor, the voltage across the plates of the capacitor as a function of time, you see that they behave as a simple exponential decay, and the current that happens is also an exponential decay. And so all of those sorts of behaviors, you're going to have the sort of behavior that we saw previously where it starts at the maximum value and then decays exponentially towards the zero. And that would be true for all the charge, the voltage across the plates, and the current. They're all going to decay exponentially. And again, if I want to know what the charge is at a particular time, say a half of a second, I could simply plug that time in for the T and plug the values for everything into my calculator, and I would be able to calculate that value. And just to remind you, this Q0 here in the expression for charge, that's the maximum amount of charge on the capacitor. And in this case, it's how much charge the capacitor starts with because we fully charge the capacitor before we disconnect the battery. And so that's the maximum amount of charge there. Um, here we see for the expression for the voltage across the capacitor, Q0 over C, well, we know that Q is equal to VC, so that's just the voltage across the capacitor when it's fully charged. And, of course, if we plug in T equal to zero there, E to the T equal to zero, E to the zero is going to be one, and we get that the voltage is just Q over C, which is what we would expect at T equal to zero for the fully charged capacitor. Then, of course, I can plug in whatever T I want for any of these expressions, and that'll give me the value of that expression at that particular time. Now, here we see a plot specifically of the voltage across the capacitor as a function of time, plotted versus time in time constants. Remember that R times C value is the characteristic time constant of the circuit, and we can see that in one time constant, 
the voltage has fallen to 37% of its maximum value. And in two, con two time constants, it's fallen further. Three time constants, it's fallen even further. Once you get out to about four time constants, you've basically had the voltage decrease all the way to zero. Next, we can look at an example. A 3-volt battery is connected to a 2500-ohm resistor in series with a 500 microfarad capacitor. After it is fully charged, the capacitor is disconnected from the battery and allowed to discharge. So that means we're going to be using the formulas on the previous slide. And we can ask these three questions. What is the initial charge on the capacitor? When will the capacitor have decayed to 50% of its initial charge? i.e. when will it have 50% of its initial charge remaining? And then we can finally ask, okay, when it has decayed 50%, what's the voltage on the plate at this time? So the first question is to find the initial charge, and we just use our fundamental capacitor equation. Q is equal to Vc. That's 3 volts times 500 times 10 to the minus 6 farads. That's what microfarads means. And when you multiply all that out, you get 1.5 times 10 to the minus 3 coulombs, or 1.5 millicoulombs if you wanted to write it that way. So we could say that that's going to be the charge on the capacitor right when the battery is disconnected. And then what happens? The charge on the capacitor starts to decay. The voltage across the plates starts to decay. The current it's going to start out as a maximum, but this, then it's going to be decreasing. The second part of the question was to determine the time at which the capacitor is at 50% of its initial charge. And we're going to work this problem the same way we worked the charging case. If you remember a few minutes ago, we looked at a charging capacitor and we said, how long does it take to reach 75% of its maximum charge? Well, here we're starting at the maximum charge and we're decaying, and we're asking how long will it take to reach 50% of the initial charge. And so how you do that is you simply use the appropriate formula. So in the previous case, we used the formula for charging. Here we obviously are going to use the formula for discharging. And so this is the formula for the charge on a capacitor at any time t. And we know we're trying to find the time when the charge on the capacitor has gotten to 50% of its maximum value. So it's decayed by 50% or it's cut in half. And so 0.5 Q0 is equal to Q0 E to the minus T over RC. Again, we can see that the Q0s are going to cancel. And I've just rearranged this equation. E to the minus T over RC is equal to 0.5. And we can see that in the next line here. To get the T by itself, you need to take the natural log of both sides. When I take the natural log of the E, that were the exponent function, that goes away, and I'm left with minus T over RC, but I have to take the natural log of the other side of the equation, and that's going to be the natural log of 0.5. When you plug that into your calculator, you get 0.693, and it's also negative. Now, we can see immediately that the negative sign there is going to cancel with the negative sign there. And I get that I can solve for t by bringing the rc over. And I end up with t equals to 0.693 r value times c. And when I plug those numbers in, I get 0 0.87 seconds. That's the time it takes for the capacitor to discharge by 50%. And finally, the problem asks, what is the voltage at that time when the capacitor has discharged 50%? So we solved that the capacitor loses its charge by 50% at t equal to 0 0.87 seconds. I have my expression here for the voltage across the plates at any time t. So I simply plug that time into there, and I plug in all the values for V, for R, for C, and when I multiply everything together, I get 1.5 volts as my answer. 
we start with three, and hopefully this answer makes sense that when the capacitor is halfway discharged, or halfway charged, either way you want to look at it, the voltage is going to be half that maximum value. But of course, I didn't get it by just thinking about it that way. I got it by plugging the time in. And that'll work for any time. So if I say, what's the voltage at one second or at half a second? I can plug those times into the formula, and that will tell me the value. So anyway, that's pretty much uh, what you need to do to be able to work these capacitor problems.